Welcome to the Corel tutorial on using PaintShop Pro's background eraser tool. This tool does exactly what it sounds like it does in that it can single out a certain area of your image allowing you to delete it and either replace it with something new or place it onto a web page and allow the background to show through. In either case, PaintShop Pro does it a whole lot easier than using a generic eraser tool. You use the background eraser tool to erase the pixels selectively. For example, in a photo of some mountains, you can erase and replace the sky, or you can isolate an object from the surrounding image area and combine it with something else, kind of similar to making a selection. As usual, go to the tutorial page and download the written tutorial and sample images if you'd like to follow along. The written part also has instructions to complete this tutorial at any time on your own. So we can probably guess the difference between this tool and the regular eraser, but let's quickly review the eraser anyway. The eraser is an all or nothing tool. It doesn't distinguish between colors like the background eraser tool does. On the other hand, it does have a feature called Smart Edge, which acts like a basic background eraser in that it automatically finds the edges of irregularly shaped areas when you click along the edges. This can provide a shortcut if desired. This feature is also available when using the painting tools and some of the selection tools. All right, let's go to the background eraser. We'll also review and choose some of this tool's options in its toolbar as we go along. Full explanations of the tool options will be at the end. I'll use the same image of a pier, a lighthouse, and the ocean, and some hills beyond. I've selected the background eraser, which is in the same flyout as the regular eraser tool. The technique to start and using this is telling the tool which part to erase and which part to retain. Your cursor will look like an inverted eraser surrounded by a circle. The center point will determine the sample to work with or the range of colors to erase. The circle represents the area that will be erased, but the circle will not erase colors outside the sampled color range. This will quickly become clear as I start removing the background. I'll set the eraser size to about 200. I can do this two ways. I can either set it in the tool options bar, or I can hold down the alt key and drag my mouse to interactively change the eraser size. Good to note though is that large sizes may slow down the process. I've set opacity to 100 to erase everything on the first path, even though you may still have to repeat parts of an area. Again, larger brush sizes and your erasing speed may cause this. I've also set it to continuous under the limits dropdown. This will only erase colors that are connected to the main erasing area. This option will help in some areas but not others. I'll show you what I mean as we go along and the ways around that. As you can see, I'm only erasing the sky because that's where the center point is located. I'm leaving the ocean and the lighthouse alone because only the outer circle reaches into that area, but not the center point. The tool sees the edge, sees the color differences, and knows to ignore them because the colors are so different, which is set by the tolerance level. Here's the end result. You'll notice that the erased background indicates as transparent as noted by the checkerboard pattern. Once you're done with this process, you can save it as a PNG file, drop it on a web page, and the background that's already on that page will show in this transparent area. Okay, let's step this up a bit, add some excitement to this process, and erase the background right into another background. I'll return back to the original image. I'll also open a sunset image, switch back to the pier image, right click and choose copy. Switch back to the sunset page, right click and choose paste, paste as new layer. 
The sunset is now designated as my background layer and the pure image is now set to be on top of it. Using the background eraser tool with the same settings, I can erase the sky and directly replace it with the sunset because it's behind it. So as you can guess, I'm making parts of the top image transparent so the one behind it shows through. Notice the inside of the hanging sign has not been erased. Same thing with the very top of the lighthouse. These are going to be really hard to get to unless I do this. I'll back up a step or two and then choose the discontinuous option under the limits drop down. This option will erase colors that fall into the eraser's limits but are disconnected from the main area. Another nice shortcut is to hold down the shift key, click on one end of where you want to erase, then while still holding shift, click on the other end like this. I'll use this technique to finish up the rest of my background erasing. Another important shortcut is that right clicking while using the background eraser will bring back whatever I've erased. Now I'll just brush over a few areas again to make them complete and we'll be done. Now that you've seen how easy it is to erase a background, there are several other option settings you can use. For more details on these, refer to the downloadable PaintShop Pro PDF user guide accessed under your help menu. But here are a few of them. Opacity means a lower setting will erase pixels to partial transparency. Tolerance determines how closely the selected pixels match the sampled pixel or where you first clicked. Sharpness specifies the softness of the erased edge. A softer brush creates anti-aliased edges. Sampling specifies the basis on which pixels are erased. This control has the following options. Once samples the point at which you first click and then erases all matching pixels for the duration of the stroke. Continuous samples continuously and erases all matching pixels it encounters, including foreground colors, if the sampled pixel falls into the foreground area. Backswatch erases all pixels that match the current background color on your materials palette. Forcewatch, on the other hand, erases all the pixels that match the current foreground color in your materials palette. Limits specifies whether erased pixels are adjacent to each other with the following options. Discontiguous erases all pixels in the tools path that match the sampled pixels, even if they are non-adjacent. We use this on the lighthouse and the sign. Contiguous erases only contiguous pixels that match sampled pixels. This setting would have skipped the areas inside the lighthouse and the sign. Auto tolerance determines which is erased based on the color range from the first color you click on. You can uncheck this manually and set the tolerance level yourself. Use all layers samples data from all layers that are merged together but only pixels in the current layer are actually erased. To sample data from the current layer only, just uncheck this box. Ignore lightness ignores sharp differences in color lightness and saturation. You can mark this checkbox when the colors in the object that you want to isolate are strongly saturated and the background is unsaturated or vice versa. Okay, if you're watching this video on YouTube, You'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on the Discovery Center.
Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial to follow along and find other helpful tutorials for working with transparencies in PaintShop Pro.